the frame is built, we've got the motor installed, got the head uh, put onto the helicopter, uh, mixer arms and the whole nine yards. Uh, the next step is we're going to get the servos installed. Um, for the cyclic, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, Hyperion high voltage servos. We're doing the HP, uh, the DH20 FTD servos for the cyclic. Uh, this should give us, oh, what are the specs here? Um, it looks like, um, well, we'll get 0.13 uh, seconds here when we run this at uh, straight eight because uh, we're going to run at a two cell lipo on the cyclics here. So uh, that should work out fine. These are titanium geared uh, servos, uh, so they, you know, they still save weight, but they're, they're still nice and strong. Um, so we'll get those installed uh, right in the front. I like how Outrage put the, uh, the three servos in the front. Um, you know, I don't mind a bell crank setup. My uh, Gowie 550s like that as well. So doing the bell crank uh, setup should be fairly easy to do. As a matter of fact, actually, uh, Outrage uh, has a nice little uh, set of tools that you can use. Um, there are some holes that are pre-drilled right in the frame uh, near the elevator uh, A-arm and near the, uh, the uh, swash arms for the two uh, front servo uh, bell cranks here as well. And the nice thing is when you line them up, you take these two, uh, these two tools and you can slide them straight through the frame and each of the arms has a hole, the A-arm has a hole as well, and when you line them through the frame there, then that locks your bell cranks in to where your mechanical 90 should be. So when you add the servos, it'll be very easy to actually make the servos 90, de the, the horns 90 degrees to the servo, because then all you have to do is measure your links directly to the bell cranks, and with this uh, uh, kind of a tool, this little uh, lock tool in here, then uh, you get you can get exact measurements between the ball links, which is very nice. Makes it very easy to do uh, that. Uh, and the other nice thing is too, then when you build up your swash uh, links, when you have the this thing locked, then you know the swash is level. Uh, going up the the head to adjust these these links here will make it very easy to come up with uh, zero degrees at the grips as well. So um, kudos to Outrage for, for, for doing this here. This is a great uh, way to build in uh, a, a kind of a nice little setup tool right into the helicopter by adding these uh, these provisions and these tools here. So that's that's perfect. I mean, even if you lost the tools, you could get a, just a two millimeter rod and stick it through there. Um, an old fly bar from a smaller helicopter or something would work perfect. But um, that's that's just a, an excellent thing. That's the first time I've seen a helicopter do something like this. You know, I've seen people buy like locking tools for the heads and stuff like that or a swash leveler, but to be able to lock the bell cranks right there um, on the helico helicopter is perfect. So that's going to make the setup uh, uh, really easy to do, I think. Um, so putting the three swash servos in uh, should be a piece of cake. Now uh, we're going to do the JR8900G on the tail for now. Um, because this isn't a high voltage servo, what we're going to do then is we're going to run the AR7100R alongside the B-Stax. Uh, so we'll find locations here uh, to install these items. Um, then what I can do then is I can pull uh, straight voltage. I think really what I'd like to do is run straight 8 into this uh, 7100R. Coming off the step down, the 5.2 volts, I'll come off. I may actually have to add, you know, like a passive step down because I know the, uh, um, the 8900 is set up, I think, for, what is it, 4. Uh, 4.8 volts, so I'm going to have to take down uh, 0.4 volts anyway coming off of the 7100R. Um, but I'm going to do it either one of two ways. I'm either going to run straight 8 into the 7100R and 8 separate into the B-Stacks, or I might just run the, the, the voltage straight into this uh, receiver and then coming off of the receiver as I daisy chain down to the B-Stex. I may power the B-Stex up that way, but what I'll do is I'll pull volts right off the, the regulated side of the 7100 uh, down to the tail servo, and I'll pop signal from the B-Stex, you know. Um, so it should be fairly simple to do. There's plenty of room on this helicopter to do all that wiring uh, to get all these items installed. I uh, still want to leave this room here on this top uh, portion here for the speed controller. Uh, I believe I want to install it right here, and then we'll run the speed control wires down for the motor. Um, I'll probably end up installing the B-Stacks along the side. This seems to be the most rigid uh, location, uh, more a little more rigid than this this front mount. I think the front mount would probably work okay, but 
uh, we'll, we'll play around with it. We'll see which way works best, I guess. But um, So stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and get these items installed in the helicopter, and then we'll come back and talk about wire and, uh, and component placement and stuff afterwards. Okay, so I've got all the electronics installed. Uh, so I got servos in place, speed controller, receiver, uh, B stacks, uh, and I got the battery configuration all squared away. Um, getting everything installed was, you know, I, I've done some research and I've seen that uh, uh, some people comment about how things are kind of a tight squeeze on this frame set. Um, I did run into that in a couple of places, but I was still able to get a uh, fairly Santa wiring job, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look where I put everything. Um, let's see. First off, I, I did tuck the B stacks in here in the gyro tray. Um, it's kind of a tight fit, but I still have access to uh, the sys port uh, for upgrades uh, and whatnot. I don't really plan on uh, needing to move any of these leads, uh, but you know, if I had to do that, I, I could still get in there and get those un undone. Uh, I still have access to the pots here by using this uh, this wire. Uh, port here on the top of the uh, the electronics mount, so uh, that that'll work out fine. I just use a uh, micro screwdriver. I can get right into there. Um, I was able to get the series lead uh, wired up. I, I went with uh, fairly short leads uh, on the speed controller, um, and then I, I'm able to run them uh, just underneath here, and then they mount nice and close to the frame on either side, as you can see here. Um, went ahead and just added a little extra strap to snug the wires down here on the batteries once they're once they're plugged in. Um, you know your standard three straps across the plate here, which is nice. But uh, went ahead and chose to put the receiver up front, uh, right in right in here. Makes it easy access to uh, the leads here. For instance, the throttle lead uh, for programming the the speed controller if I need or want to change any governor settings. Uh, I went ahead and put the flight pack right up uh, underneath here. Uh, makes for a nice. Uh, uh, a nice clean uh, wiring job and access to uh, to plug in for electronics power. Um, I was able to get the servo leads all routed, uh, tucked between here and then down along uh, the bottom. Basically what I did was I, I went uh, uh, fuzzy side out on the wires and rough side out on the B stacks here so that when they're in here it's uh, quite nicely they uh, basically mount together. I wanted to strap them separately so that I don't get any sort of maybe vibes from the wires uh, translating back up into the unit here. Um, but uh, as you can see here, it makes for a nice clean wiring job. There really aren't any wires visible on the outside of the frame. Uh, you know, I, I think it serves a dual purpose. One, it keeps all the wires nice and snug inside the frame and protected. Um, and it helps to avoid any sort of chafing that might uh, happen from, you know, moving things around uh, uh, along the outside of the helicopter. So um, I did uh, briefly put the tail boom on and check the uh, center of gravity. Uh, with everything where I've got it here, the center of gravity is uh, right on. You know, it's spot on, which is uh, which has uh, worked out very well. Um, so yeah, overall uh, a fairly clean uh, setup, you know. I think the extra time uh, taken to, to route the wires properly makes for a much cleaner look. Um, you know, I'm all about form, uh, you know, as well as function, you know, but uh, um, so uh, with that being said, uh, now that this is all complete, the next step that we're going to go through is uh, I'm immediately going to upgrade the firmware on the BSTX to version 3. I'm going to upgrade the firmware on the speed controller or at least check it. Uh, this is new stock. It's got the, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's got the blue wrap. Um, around the signal lead, uh, and I know Castle had done that to signify that this is new, uh, new stock, not uh, maybe a refurb 
for a, a, a return and uh, like replacing a board or something like that. So, um, what we'll do next after that, while we're walking through programming here, we'll go ahead and get the link set up uh, for the head, and then we'll go through BSTEX programming. I'll do another video on that as well. But um, again, I had touched before on the other uh, video about the uh, the setup uh, tools that came. Uh, with the bird. I've got them mounted in here to lock the bell cranks which is actually fairly nice and the way the servos are laid out on the frame uh, it makes for a perpendicular access between the servo case and the direction towards the bell crank so it's actually be a fairly easy two-step process I'm just gonna do uh, when we do set up step uh, um, G we're going to head uh, you know basically just lock the servos uh, horns at 90 degrees get them as close as we can uh, do the trims and stuff like that to get these horns 90. Once I know they're 90, I can basically power everything off because then all I have to do is measure the links here uh, on the bell cranks uh, and those links will be made and I know, I'll know that they're spot on because uh, from here, this bell crank, all I have to, or this bell cranks here, all I have to do is run the links from here to the swash. Uh, the swash will be level and uh, the, the grips will see 90 degrees as well. Um, then I can just power everything up and uh, double check uh, to make sure the blades pitch at zero, do any minor adjustments if I got to turn the links ever so slightly or whatever. But um, this particular uh, build, I think that uh, BSTEX programming is going to be, uh, you know, perhaps in, in, in some cases a little bit easier than some of the other ones I've done. I know my Gowie 550 frame, the servos are 90 to the frame globally, but they're, that makes the horns fairly difficult to find where perpendicular is to the bell crank. And so I had to spend a lot more time getting that right. Um, but uh, in here it's going to be fra fairly straightforward. I could probably almost eyeball it and be done. Um, after that uh, we'll set mesh, uh, check directions, and then uh, we'll be ready for some test flights. Alright, well uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned uh, for the BSTEC setup video.